Welcome to another edition of Horse Center, everyone. I am Brian Zipsy, and as always, I have the excellent pleasure of being joined by my co-host to the East Coast. That's Matt Shipman. How are you today, Matt? I am good, Brian. Ready for another Horse Center. Boy, we are deep, deep on the Kentucky Derby Trail now. Oh, we're deep in the doo-doo, as they say, Matt, the horse doo-doo, uh, because we have Kentucky Derby fever six weeks out from the big weekend at Churchill Downs. That means the the, the big prep weekends are coming. We have this week uh, Louisiana and the Jeff Ruby, and it only gets bigger uh, next week, Florida Derby, Arkansas Derby, and then after that, of course, Bluegrass, Wood Memorial, Santa Anita Derby. Three big weekends at Derby Preps, Matt. Let's start down in the Big Easy with the Louisiana Derby. A solid field of 12 is set there, Matt. Although, although we think uh, Agate Road, number four there, as you see him on the, uh, the, the uh, post positions, will probably, according to the latest information, be at Turfway Park. Uh, Pletcher had two horses cross-entered in these two preps this weekend. It looks like Agate Road will be at Turfway Park for the Jeff Ruby. Let's start from the rail, Matt. Triple Espresso is the other one who is cross-centered. We could see him in either place. We don't know much uh, of which place he's going, but with Agate Road going to Turfway, maybe Triple Espresso shows up here. He's been a turf horse so far in his career. Yeah, that's for sure, Brian. Uh, uh, started his career uh, on the turf, already has uh, a couple of uh, starts in stakes races on the turf, Was broke his maiden special weight in his fourth try. So regardless of where he goes, uh, he would have a lot to prove uh, going into these level uh, uh, Kentucky Derby preps and the size of these fields. Yeah, he's, he's shown some promise on turf. He ran in a, a turf stakes uh, before he broke his maiden. He broke his maiden two starts back uh, at uh, Gulfstream Park. And then he was a decent fourth, beating three lengths last time in the Colonel Liam, but all turf. So he's, whichever race he ends up, whether it's the dirt here at Fairgrounds or on the all-weather surface at Turfway Park, it'll, he'll be trying something new. Son of Omaha Beach is not a complete and utter throwout, but it's probably tough to pick him here in the louisiana derby number two on the other hand matt is one of two for trainer steve asmussen hall of fame all-time wins leader trainer steve asmussen hall of fame lightly raised son of gun runners only had three starts matt uh two starts back he broke his maiden by more than 10 lengths which made him uh very much liked in a sloppy edition of the risen star but he backed out of that pretty good and finished seventh i do think there's reason to believe he can run a much better race though here on saturday yeah that's for sure brian and uh i, I think we should note that uh in this field there there are a bunch of horses uh, uh running in the louisiana derby that ran in the risen star so you know that sloppy track that you mentioned is uh factor with all of them and uh that risen star was run at a mile and an eighth and they're the only horses in this field that have gone that distance and then keeping in mind that the louisiana derby stretches it stretches it out another 16th of a mile to a mile and three sixteenths making it the longest kentucky derby prep available on the on the road to Churchill and just the 16th of, mi 16th of a mile from the actual classic distance. I think that's a big factor in the way you look at this race, getting back to Hall of Fame more specifically for Hall of Famer uh, Steve Asmus. And I do want to note that that 10 length maiden victory was with first time Lasix and that this horse was certainly well thought of for a long time. It's a $1.4 million yearling purchase. Yeah, all good points, Matt. Uh, yeah, this uh, million-dollar Louisiana Derby is the longest prep, as Matt said. So a uh, long stretch there at Fairgrounds, and there is some speed, including Hall of Fame. Uh, I happen to think that Sierra Leone and Track Phantom, the one-two finishers in that sloppy edition of the Risen Star, were the best two horses in the race. However, there are some horses who could bounce back a little bit, and I think Hall of Fame making his fourth lifetime start, probably on a fast track here Saturday, could be one of those horses that moves back up 
uh, uh, in the Louisiana Derby. Number three, another Pletcher. This one not cross-centered, so we should see antiquarian son of preservationist in the uh, uh, Louisiana Derby here. Only had two starts, Matt. Uh, a second, a good second, and then he uh, broke his maiden last time uh, at fairgrounds, uh, a horse with some potential, but uh, both of his two races to date were maiden races. Yeah, and that good second that you mentioned in his debut was behind a good horse that we've seen on the Derby Trail in Conquest Warrior. Yes, second to Conquest Warrior in his debut, but that was the race, if you remember, where Conquest Warrior had all kinds of trouble and he still won. So not sure how big a, a feather in the cap of Antiquarian that is. Uh, I, I guess I guess Pletcher, two good races. Johnny V is the rider. You have to give him a little respect. But on the other hand, it's a big step up from Maiden Company to this mile, 316th million dollar race. Number four, as we mentioned, Agate Road. Uh, if he somehow ends up in Louisiana, we feel like he won't. But if he does, uh, I, I think he's got a shot in here. Irad Ortiz would be riding him. And Agate Road has run well on turf and dirt already. Yep, he's already shown uh, he's already shown that versatility. Uh, uh, he debuted on the dirt, and then his most recent race was that uh, second place finish in the Sam F. Davis, where he came from way back uh, from eleventh to get to second. It was a promising return to the dirt for uh, Agate Road. Yeah, a, a factor, some a horse to think about for sure in either race he runs, but we think it'll be the Jeff Ruby. Number five is Catching Freedom, Catching Freedom, a son of constitution for trainer Brad Cox, Matt. Um, a lot of good performances there for Catching Freedom. He uh, uh, hasn't run a bad race, really, and his uh, debut performance at Churchill Downs, something to think about in the future, was a good race. But uh, more specifically, he's a stakes winner at Oaklawn Park. And he was a good third last time in the Risen Star. Yes, he was a good third in the Risen Star, Brian, as you mentioned. And it was behind two very good horses that we know that are winners on the Derby Trail in Sierra Leone and Track Phantom. But to me, the biggest thing to take out of uh, that performance on the uh, Risen Star is, to me, he's one of the ones that definitely had a look of uh, being able to handle more distance especially that extra 16th of a mile. Yeah, I agree with you there, Matt. He, he may not have been running as fast as Sierra Leone at the end, but he was running well down the stretch in that nine furlong risen star. Now he gets a fast track, already a stakes winner this year. Catching freedom sure looks like a horse that you have to consider in the Louisiana Derby. Number six, Matt, awesome Ruda. I, I just wrote 200 to one. I think he was quite a bit higher than 200 to one. Uh, in the Risen Star. Uh, he he finished kind of mid-pack. He was sixth, beating eight and a quarter lengths, but uh, a long shot once again for sure here Saturday. Yeah, a long shot. I guess his better races were a little bit earlier on uh, in his career when he broke his maiden at Louisiana, down, Louisiana Downs by uh, nine lengths in his second try and then uh, picked up a second place in a minor stakes race at Delta Downs. Yeah, smaller tracks. He's one of seven lifetime, and his only win came at Louisiana Downs. So reason for him to be a long shot. The seven, on the other hand, Matt, is a horse in here with a shot. His name is Honor Maria, son of Honor Code for Whit Be Beckman. Matt, he's uh, run four times. Two of them were on off tracks, and the performances weren't bad, including a fifth, a late running fifth last time in the Risen Star. But on a fast track, he's two for two. He's a graded stakes winner. That came at Churchill Downs last fall. He's one of those horses, like I said, with Hall of Fame that could move forward off that Risen Star performance. Yeah, I think so. Certainly, uh, with certainly with a dry track, that's going to uh, uh, be a plus for him. Uh, he won the Kentucky Jockey Club, a Grade Two, a Derby Trail race, uh, and uh, you mentioned the fifth in the Risen Star for upcoming trainer Wit. Beckman, a former assistant to Chad Brown. Number eight is Next Level. Next Level we've seen as a long shot in some of these Kentucky Derby preps. He'll be a long shot again for trainer Keith DeSormo on Saturday. Matt, he went over to uh, Arkansas last time for the Rebel 
and that wasn't a, uh, a, a competitive uh, finisher in that one. He's only won one out of eight. We've said before, DeSormo can pop horses up in these derby prep races, but it's hard to uh, find a reason why next level is going to be a big uh, contributor on Saturday. Yeah, have to agree with that, although it is a little bit uh, curious that uh, DeSormo keeps trying him in these big races, and he's not usually the kind of uh, trainer that will run a horse in spots like this when uh, they don't really have any chance. Number nine, Real Men Violin. Real Men Violin was uh, becoming a pretty nice two-year-old last fall at uh, up in my, my neck of the woods up here. Uh, at Churchill Downs, Matt. Uh, he's only had one race back for Kenny McPeak. And it kind of concerns me because he really didn't do much at all in the Risen Star on that sloppy track. And he had good wet track uh, performances before that. So it was kind of a dull effort for real men violin. It doesn't get any easier here on Saturday, one of two for McPeak in the Louisiana Derby. Yeah, I have to, have to agree with you. Uh, McPeak is the kind of trainer that will run his horses but yeah that comeback race was uh, uh not very encouraging yeah and it looks like uh, bj hernandez probably could have had his pick between the two mcpeak horses he chose the number 10 common defense and it seems like a wise decision uh off their last race comma common defense is the son of carrick and tie breeders cup mile winner on the grass not years ago this one, as, uh, as I mentioned, is, is another Kenny McPeak runner. Uh, I think he's run four solid races at Oaklawn Park. Uh, maybe the, the, the Southwest where it was muddy, uh, he didn't do his best running, but uh, he looks like a solid young horse with four starts. Last time, a good second in the Rebel. Yeah, and it was good to see him, uh, I don't know if bounce back is the right word, but to run a much better race uh, off of the muddy track when he uh, ran in the Rebel. Right. The Rebel was uh, second behind Timberlake, and, and Timberlake is high in a lot of people's lists uh, on, on this Kentucky Derby Trail. Common defense should get some uh, uh, consideration for sure here. I think the same would be should be said about number 11, uh, 8 to 1 on the morning line. Tyler Gaffleone will be in the irons on Tuscan Gold, Matt. Tuscan Gold. Uh, like Antiquarian, has only made two career starts, but uh, they're interesting. The first start, he was fourth in his debut, which happened at Aqueduct last fall. Sierra Leone was the winner of that one. Came back uh, in January at uh, Gulfstream Park, the, the very end of January, and he was an impressive maiden winner for trainer Chad Brown. Yeah, with a victory by more than six lengths in that maiden score. I will admit, though, I do get concerned when I see a big performance like that with first-time Lasix and now having to go back to running without it. Yeah, yeah, something to think about there. Matt's right. Uh, on the other hand, the, 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 the debut performance wasn't bad at all for a horse who probably – uh, has uh, some talent, a uh, $600,000 purchase, Medagliadoro out of that nice race mare from a few years back, Valdorna, uh, a curlin mare. So uh, I, I think I'm going to uh, argue with myself a little bit. I said Antiquarian is up against it a little bit coming out of a maiden race. I, I do like Tuscan Gold a little bit more here coming off a maiden race and only two lifetime starts. Finally, we get to the race favorite. Far outside, Joel Rosario is on again. Track Phantom, Matt. Track Phantom has beat, been beaten by one horse going two turns in four starts at two turns. And that one horse, of course, was Sierra Leone running him down late last time in the Risen Star. Track Phantom has done little wrong in his six career races for Steve Asmussen. Uh, a lot to like. He's the horse to beat on his uh, past performances. On the other hand, he's coming from the far outside post. Yeah, uh, um, Track Phantom is the leading money win winner in this field. Track Phantom is the leading derby points uh, uh, earner with 55 on this list. And, and like you said, his recent races has, have been very good. That second place finish where he was on the lead, getting beat by uh, uh, a really good horse in Sierra Leone. And talk about a horse that's uh, at the top of many people's uh, uh derby list that is certainly sierra leone but you have to ask the question 
at this point about that second place finish? Was it just that he lost to a very good horse or was it the distance uh, in the risen star that got him caught at the end? And then the added distance in here. Um, not sure how to answer that question, but it's a concern. Yeah, maybe a little bit more of a concern for you than me. I think Track Phantom's all class. He's won two stakes already at this track. And uh, I thought he ran a very good race at nine furlongs in Sierra Leone. Sierra Leone is not in this one. However, let's jump to the time form U.S. pace projector for the Louisiana Derby. A mile 316, it's a long stretch. They are projecting a pretty fast pace. They do say that Track Phantom will clear and get the early lead, but there are horses that are uh, going to be out there, including his stablemate Hall of Fame, the lightly raced Antiquarian, and uh, DeSormo's long shot next level. So they're saying a fast pace and a mile 316 long stretch, having to work maybe a little bit to get that lead could be a little bit tough for Track Phantom. Yeah, it's an interesting pace dynamic in here. Uh, we'll have to see how that plays out. Yeah, some of the horses you see farther back uh, include, uh, of course, Catching Freedom, number five. You see him on the rail kind of three-quarters of the way back off this lead. Uh, Honor Marie making his second start of the year. We know he wants to rally. Uh, also, Agate Road, if he's in the race, Agate Road will be farther back. And they say Triple Espresso, switching from turf to dirt, will be farther back as well. Might be a race that uh, is set up a little bit for closers in here, Matt Schiffman. And uh, that's something to think about, especially when you have a favorite who's a speed horse. Yeah, no doubt. Hey, uh, let's take a quick break between this Louisiana Derby and the uh, Jeff Ruby Stakes. Stakes spelled S-T-E-A-K-S. My, <laughs> my preferred steak, I guess. If I had to choose between a steak and a steak, I'd go with the steak. Anyway... The Super Screener, Matt, uh, Super Screener's doing a bunch. And uh, of course, they're put out by uh, Horse Racing Nation and our good friend, uh, Mike Shuddy. Mike Shuddy does a wonderful job, Matt. And they're going pretty hardcore. If you want to dive deeper into these uh, Kentucky Derby preps than we do here in our half an hour Horse Center show, Super Screener might be a great way to do it. Yeah, Super Screener uh, is a really good product. Product. It's a comprehensive handicapping product with uh, uh, analysis of horses, uh, uh, identifying long shots, giving you uh, possible wagering uh, uh, tickets at, at all different kinds of budgets. And here you're looking at, I know it looks like a big price, $77, but that is for seven races. That breaks down to like about 10 bucks each. I think that's like how much a racing form costs these days. That's true, Matt. And and it's not just these seven Kentucky Derby preps. They're also doing so these stakes races that are, are coming before uh, at uh, at these Derby prep tracks for the next three weeks. So, yeah, I uh, can't say enough about the Super Screener. It truly does uh, grind out all the data and really it does identify horses that uh, can uh, run above their odds or perhaps below their odds really helps with the exotics as well. So check out the super screener, Matt, we're going to jump to uh Turfway park in Northern Kentucky here for the Jeff Ruby stakes. I want to remind you this nine furlong $700,000 grade three race. They produced a lot of good hor uh, horses over the years who've done well uh, on the triple crown trail, whether you're talking about two fills last year or animal kingdom, Hansel, uh, don't sleep on the Jeff Ruby stakes, and we got a full field. In fact, we have an overflow field on the all-weather surface. Uh, there's the favorite in the picture, if you can see it. That's Endlessly, endlessly who's uh, uh, run well on all-weather surfaces and grass. But we're going to start at the rail map. Freedom Principle will be a long shot here. The Son of Flame Away is coming off a couple of stakes losses on the grass. But if you go back a little deeper in his past performances, he has some nice wins on the Gulfstream all-weathers all weather surface. Yep, started his career on the Tapita at Gulfstream Park. His first four races uh, were on the, uh, on the artificial synthetic surface. He is a stakes winner at Gulfstream Park also. Yeah, yeah, two nice wins on the all-weather surface at Gulfstream Park, including a stakes win. 
Uh, he gets back to this type of surface on Saturday, and it might be a long shot to think about. 30 to 1 on the morning line. Number two is Dancing Groom. We've seen Dancing Groom in uh, in graded stakes uh, plenty uh, of late for trainer Antonio Sano, Matt. He was sixth in the Kentucky Jockey Club, fifth in the Holy Bowl, uh, fifth last time in the Fountain of Youth. He, he was never really a threat in any of those. First time on an all-weather surface, uh, maybe slightly uh, less competition here, but I don't know. I, I, I just can't jump on dancing groom but frankie detori will be flying off if he happens to win this jeff ruby well that's always fun having frankie uh in uh in the big races yeah dancing groom started out his career uh impressively with a maiden special weight win at saratoga and since then has been running in all graded stakes races but you know hasn't really shown that much in those races no, not enough for me to uh, to like his chances here. Number three could be an interesting long shot. His name is Lucky Jeremy, a son of looking at Lucky, who was a champion at both two and three several years ago. Matt, this is a horse who's only had four starts. He's won two of them. Uh, he's coming from New Mexico, where he shipped out for his last two races, ran well to win the prep for the uh, Sunland Derby, and then ran a decent third last time in the Sunland Derby. Right, absolutely. Uh, he will be going from dirt to synthetic in uh, in this uh, uh, Jeff Ruby stakes, but uh, his trainer, uh, uh, Bill Maury, I think has enough experience running horses at Turfway to know uh, when uh, is the right time to do that. Uh, he's got speed, and I think he's got legitimate speed, which could make him dangerous. Dangerous. Uh, last time beaten by Stronghold, who's a very good three-year-old in the Sunland Derby. So Lucky Jeremy in with a chance here on Saturday. As is number four noted, noted another one, 15 to 1 on the morning line, Louis Saez. Uh, this, of course, is a Todd Pletcher, a son of Caro Prince. Uh, he's a stakes winner on both turf and dirt. Uh, he will uh, uh, jump into this race with odds, I think, Matt, because last time he failed at the Kitten's Joy. But there's a lot of good races for Noted. Uh, and again, he's handled the first two surfaces that he's uh, he's run on. Yeah, and if you dig down and want to dig down in his past performances, one of those uh, stakes wins was uh, in the summer on the dirt at. Uh, at Monmouth Park, and if you also can notice that he beat Dornock in August at Monmouth Park. Dornock, of course, a recent winner on the Kentucky Derby Trail. Yeah, that came in the sapling. Noted beat Dornock on the dirt at Monmouth in the sapling. So uh, perhaps a horse to look at if you can excuse his last race in the Kitten's Joy. Number five, again, not to be redundant, but we expect Agate Road to be in the Jeff Ruby field. And I think that makes him a big threat in here, Matt. I get road is on a quality road. He's never run a bad race. They've come on turf or dirt throughout his career. Uh, uh, I believe he's had six solid races now. He's run against good competition. He really doesn't have any speed. He's going to have to pick him up in the stretch. But uh, I get road going to an all weather surface for the first time with all that good turf form. Uh, Agate Road looks like one of the ones to beat in here to me. Yeah, and with already having shown success on the turf and the dirt, I I don't have any reservations that he will uh, not take to the uh, synthetic surface at Turfway at Turfway Park. Yes, he's a big closer, but there appears to be an, a, a pace in the race that should help with that. Well, since you just mentioned it, let's pull up the time form U.S. pace projector, Matt. Uh, big field. Again, 12 entered, uh, two also eligibles in the field. We're looking at the 12 uh, that drew in, and it says fast pace again here in this nine furlong race on uh, on the top of the all-weather surface at uh, Turfway Park. Uh, among them, Lucky Jeremy, who I know you like a little bit in here. Uh, we're going to talk about Northern Flame in a second. We're going to talk about West Saratoga a little bit later. Uh, but they're saying strong pace. Uh, so that could help horses that want to come from behind. And those would include probably Agate Road, the number five. You see them dead last in this projection. 
early. Otello, also another horse who can rally. And then uh, another one of the favorites, Endlessly, uh, who we'll talk about in a minute, will uh, also want to come from off the pace. So looking at a fast pace, projecting a fast pace, time form U.S. is in both of these Kentucky Derby preps, Matt. Where did we leave off? Oh, yeah, Northern Flame, the number six. Northern Flame, uh, of course, is another one of those sons of flame away. Northern Flame trained by Kenny McPeak and uh, a little bit up, at, up and down. Uh, in his uh, career as a two-year-old last year, but he showed some flashes at Oaklawn Park. He's coming off a couple very solid performances. Yep, solid performances. First in uh, in an allowance race at Oaklawn, and then a third place finish in the Rebel. It seems like McPeak's got this one going in the right direction now. Yeah, Northern Flame has already started eight times. He's faced a bunch of good horses, including that third in the Rebel behind again, uh, Timberlake. Uh, nothing about Northern Flame makes me think, wow, this is going to be a, a, a graded stakes winner or, or a top Kentucky Derby horse. But those races at Oaklawn are good enough for him to uh, uh, be a contender in here. And with the breeding, I think he'll be okay on the synthetic surface, as would the number seven. In fact, this number seven already has a win at Turfway Park, Matt. It's the son of Ransom the Moon named Woodcourt. You can see the morning line there. They're getting a lot of respect on Northern Flame and Woodcourt. Uh, Woodcourt also coming from Oaklawn Park of late. Two decent performances for him as well after winning at Turfway Park. After winning at Turfway Park uh, in an allowance race, an optional claiming allowance race, uh, where we should note that he was claimed, but then went on to uh, another allowance win and ran fourth in that Rebel that we have talked about a good bit at this point. Um, he's got 10 Derby points, but at this point, he's not nominated for the Triple Crown. Yeah, yeah, that's true. And uh, he, he looks like a horse who might be a cut below. But on the other hand, a win over the track is something to consider, especially when you're filling out the exotics. Number eight is interesting to me, Matt. His name is Otello. Much like noted, you have to kind of draw a line through the last race to really see my thinking here. But that's sometimes when you get the good odds is when they're coming off a disappointing race. Javier Castellano will be on this lightly raced son of Curlin. Christophe Clamont has this lightly raced son of Curlin working on the turf of late, even though his first three races were all on the dirt. Remember, he really finished strongly to win his debut at Aqueduct and to win the Mucho Macho Man at Gulfstream Park. Last time, though, sixth in the Holy Bull, bumped at the start a little bit, just didn't fire. Uh, there's some signs that make me think he might be ready to fire this time, though. Yeah, could be, because uh, he won his first two races, and he did them nicely from the barn of Christophe Clement. Uh, uh, again, Clement is not the kind of trainer who's going to throw a horse like this, a promising horse like this, into a tough spot unless he thinks that he's in good form and ready to go. To, to see if he can compete at this level. Yeah, Javi, Javi jumping on Otello here at, in the Jeff Ruby, those turf workouts. Otello's interesting to me for sure. Number nine, D. Wayne Lucas. We're, we're, we're still talking a lot about the octogenarian, Matt. D. Wayne Lucas has seized the gray. It's on an arrogate uh, two of six. Uh, lifetime uh, uh, on the dirt. So we're going to see Seize the Gray on the on the turf. I'm not sure about those morning line odds of six to one. I don't want him at six to one, but uh, I guess he's run some decent races. Yeah, he's run some decent races. And I agree, Brian. I think there are a lot of horses to like better. So I, I'm skeptical of the six to one odds. Yeah. Coming off a win at Oakland Park last time against a decent allowance field. Here's the favorite on the morning line, and I think a deserving favorite. Uh, number 10 is Endlessly. Endlessly will be leaving the friendly confines of California for the first time here on Matt, uh, on Saturday, Matt. But uh, Endlessly has run, I guess you can say, all good races because he's won four out of five. He's won three stakes races. He's won on turf and last time on an all-weather surface at Golden Gate Field. His one loss was the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Turf. Got beat, I don't know, three, three and a half lengths or so. So um, uh, really good past performances. Consistent horse for trainer Mike McCar Michael McCarthy. 
Yep, trainer Michael McCarthy, uh, who we know from uh, Breeders' Cup victories and and uh, other big uh, performances. Uh, he's run horses on the Triple Crown before. Uh, um, I think he's got bringing his horse to Kentucky in an ideal spot to qualify for the run for the roses. Yeah, he's already qualified for the Preakness with that El Camino Real Derby. Again, uh, a multiple stakes winner last year on turf, and he's won already at the distance, already on a synthetic track in that El Camino Real Derby. Uh, number 11 looks like a long shot to me, Matt. Uh, Baytown Chatterbox is a son of street sense. Two of eight lifetime, uh, mostly sprinting. He did win a stakes race at Ellis Park sprinting at 60 to 1. I'm not sure I see it here, though. Yeah, and that was way back in August uh, in an early uh, two-year-old stake and it's got a recent uh, second in an allowance at one of our favorite tracks, Brian, Charlestown. Charlestown, sprinting, uh, sprinting for sure. So he's another horse who could add a little speed here in the Jeff Ruby. Number 12 is West Saratoga. We've known about this son of exaggerator for a while, Matt. He won the Iroquois going back four starts ago. Uh, fifth in the Breeders Futurity, second in the Pasco, third in the Sam F. Davis. Uh, maybe not super close in any of those last three, but it didn't run poorly in any of these three. Now he tries a synthetic surface on the far outside, a horse you have to at least respect in this Jeff Ruby field. Yeah, he's got pretty good uh, past performances. He's got 17 derby points at, at this point and, and wouldn't need to add too many to that in some years to to get into the derby but yeah uh uh drawing the 12 hole uh in this uh jeff ruby sure doesn't make it any easier and a task for west saratoga yeah that's 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 true man and, and there's two also eligibles uh, neither one would be complete throwouts if they got in circle p uh he he's cross-centered though in a stakes race at laurel and triple espresso we already talked because he's uh, talked about because he's cross-centered in the Louisiana Derby, given that they're both cross-centered and on the also eligible, it might be more likely that they end up there in the other places, not at Turfway Park. All right, Matt, uh, we talked about uh, two full fields for these derby preps, which is always nice when we hit these exotics on Saturday. I'm going to let you go first with your top pick. Let's start with the Louisiana Derby. Okay, Louisiana Derby. I am going to go with... Uh... Uh, with Catching Freedom, Catching Freedom, we talked about, uh, I, I liked his third place finish in the, in the uh, Risen Star behind uh, Sierra Leone and, it, and Track Phantom, as we talked about, but I like Catching Freedom because I like the looks of him. I, I feel confident that he is going to handle the, uh, uh, extra distance in the Louisiana Derby. And I feel like he can be the one that might make the last run and the best run to win the race. Yeah. I, I don't know if he'll make the last run. I think there might be horses uh, farther back than him trying to run them all down. But I, I do think catching freedom is a horse who should move forward, continue to move forward for trainer Brad Cox. Why is he going to beat Track Phantom? Well, he's a little bit more lightly raced. There is speed. Track Phantom's on the outside. Track Phantom's the, the likely favorite, the deserving favorite in here. But Catching Freedom looks like a horse who's good enough uh, to win a big race like this and a horse who could move forward and a horse who uh, might be a little bit stronger, as Matt said, than Track Phantom in the last eighth of a mile down that long fairground stretch. So Matt and I agree in the Louisiana Derby. In the Jeff Ruby, we're on different horses, though, Matt. Yeah, it I, looks like we are. Um, I am uh, going to take a shot with a longer price in here. I'm going to take a shot with Lucky Jeremy, the speed horse. I think uh, he's going to get to the lead. I think he's going to get to the lead easily and may be able to parcel that speed out, and they're going to have to catch him down the stretch at Turfway Park. Yeah, and that's despite the time form U.S. pace projector. Uh, so we'll, we'll see. I, I'm going on the other end of the early spectrum because I think Agate Road will be laying them down and picking them up in the stretch. I, I think he's bound to like 
uh, the all weather surface at uh, Turfway Park. And uh, again, just like Chuck Phantom, yeah, endlessly deserves to be the favorite and certainly could win this. But I like the way Agate Road finished uh, a lot of his races, but last time in the Jeff Ruby. And I think Pletcher's found a good spot here. Uh, last time, I guess that was in the Sam F. Davis. I think Pletcher's found a good spot here in the Jeff Ruby stakes. All right, Matt. Uh, be before we say goodbye and, and, and start talking about the Arkansas Derby and the Florida Derby next week, uh, I want to mention the chosen Ron because he won his 16th race out of 21 starts last week, uh, 15 stakes wins for the California bred gelding. So that was fun to see, even if it was at low odds in the San Carlos last week. Let me get a parting shot from you, my friend. Yeah, you got to love horses like that, Brian, and I don't care, you know, uh, small field, big field, uh, uh, when they win that much, uh, you got to be rooting for them to uh, keep on running and, and continue their uh, their great careers. And uh, I can't argue with your pick with, of Agate Road uh, in the uh, Jeff Ruby also, but wanted to take a shot on a long shot. Everybody, thank you for watching Horse Center. Thank you for staying with Brian and I on the Derby Trail. And we'll be back next week. Yeah, we'll be back next week with some big Derby preps again. Thanks to Candace Curtis for the great race graphics she provides us. Derby Wars, our sponsor, the best contest site out there. And, of course, Time Form US for their pace projectors. Most of all, though, thanks for all you continuing to tune in to Horse Center. We hope you enjoy the show. We hope our picks help you out a little bit as you are trying to win some money next week of course arkansas derby florida derby join us again right here on horse center until then good luck 